I'm Mark Kepler with Purdue University Extension Service located in Rochester. And today we're going to be talking about a, a situation that is going to be very deadly in our community. And it's a situation that's been brought about by a bug that has been brought into our area. And this insect is called an invasive species. And we deal with a lot of different invasive species in our area. But this one has the potential to kill every single ash tree that's in our area. And so today we're standing right here near the dam of Lake Manitow and we've got some ash trees we're going to take a look at and we're going to explain this situation to you and let you know exactly what's going on in our community and what's happening. The first place to start is the identification of an ash tree. Up until about 10 years ago I would have told people that an ash tree was one of the best trees that you could have planted in your yard. At that time what happened was there was a bug that got off a boat up in Detroit, Michigan and unbeknownst to people, it started invading into the ash trees in that area. And all of a sudden, they started seeing these ash trees that were starting to die all over the place. Uh, the U.S. Department of Agriculture came in and investigated that situation and found this insect called the emerald ash borer. Emerald being very bright green and it only affects ash trees. And it's an important thing for us to understand today that only ash trees are affected by this insect. And uh, so what we're gonna do is talk to you about what ash trees are. And I wanna start off by looking at the bark on this tree. In our community, most of our street trees that we find, trees in our yard, are ones that are maples. But so chances are you've got a maple tree in your yard, but if you've got an ash tree, this is some of the unique characteristics of that. First thing is we take a look at the bark on this ash tree and we'll see that that bark has kind of a raised bark, not very flat like many of our maples are, but we see kind of grooves cut into it and bumps on it along that line. And that's one of the aspects of an ash tree that we'll see. It's kind of interesting to look at, but as you look at the bark, they say you can see diamonds in it. And you've got to imagine this a little bit when we think about it. But if we look at it, we'll see that the fact that uh, it'll have a point at the top, it widens out and comes together. So this bark kind of forms a diamond formation. And that's part of the, the thing that we'll see on the bark of that tree. The other thing that we take a look at is the leaves. And so I have in my hand here, uh, this is a really newly formed leaves that are just coming off uh, this spring of the year. And with an ash tree, instead of having one leaf, with one lobe on it like a maple tree does. These are multiple little leaflets. And what we end up seeing is, lots of times if you count them, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaflets. They can be five to seven leaflets are all on this. And then they come down to a point down here at the bottom where we have a bud. So this whole thing is actually a leaf and each one of these have different leaflets on there. So if you think about a maple leaf, it has different lobes on it. Well, in this case, it also has lobes, but they're really deep lobes that come in and look like leaves. So that's what an ash tree would look like. And so what we're really concerned with is the fact that what's going to happen with these ash trees over the next several years. And so let's go take a look at what's going on with these ash trees with this emerald ash borer. Okay, this is an ash tree that uh, another one that's located here in this same area. And we're taking a look at it because we see some damage on this tree. This damage is done by humans. We did something to this. But what I'm really gonna look at is what's going on with this ash borer and what's happening. The first thing is this insect has come into this community. And again, I said it jumped off a boat in Detroit and started up through there. And as it went through, it kept coming and coming and coming. And they tried to stop it and they weren't able to stop it. And if you go over to Fort Wayne, Indiana right now, you'll see just about every tree that's in that community that's an ash tree is gone, it's dead. And that's the unique characteristic about this ash borer. It has the ability to kill every single ash tree in this area. Everyone is going to die. And then we're gonna to talk to you about what happens and what, how we notice what's going on with these different trees. So on this tree here, the first thing you might be able to notice, and if it was a little earlier in the spring, you would see this, you would see something like this. Areas where the bark have become smooth. Over here, areas where the bark has become smooth. And you'll see a little bit on this other tree, uh, total areas that have been affected that way. This is where a woodpecker has come along and the woodpecker has found these bores in this tree and it's flaked off the bark and eventually you'll see woodpecker holes start to develop in here and inside of those woodpecker holes then he'll get down and get that larva of this emerald ash borer and he'll pull that out of there and he'll start consuming it. So what this larva is doing 
This green bug comes along, lays its eggs on this tree, the eggs hatch out and it goes underneath this tree and just barely gets underneath the bark of this tree, which is the live part of the tree. And underneath there it starts making galleries under there and it destroys that live part of the tree and that's why it kills the tree. So let's take a look <clears throat> at this piece of bark right here. It's been kind of pulled off. Let's go ahead and pull it on off of here and take a look and see what's going on underneath that piece of bark. So what's going on is underneath that bark, these little bugs are going along as a larva, which is kind of a worm looking thing, and they're making these grooves. They're making these grooves underneath this bark. And what they'll end up doing is they'll tunnel back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and so that they'll kill this tree just because the live part of this tree is basically right underneath the bark of this tree. And so that's how the emerald ash borer kills our trees. Here's an ash tree that has an extensive amount of damage done to it. And here's what's going on. Notice how the bark's been flaked off by the woodpeckers. Then the woodpeckers have pounded the holes into this looking for those larvae. And so that's what has going on here. Down below, uh, we've already been out to this tree. And we've taken a knife and peeled off some of the bark to look below it to see the damage that's already been done. And you can see the tunnels that have been underneath that bark caused by these, a variety of insects, these emerald ash borers that have been underneath that bark. So this tree at this point right now is definitely infected with this emerald ash borer. The real question is, how long of a life does this tree have left in it? And the answer to that is it's got several years of life. In fact, it'll leaf out this year and look fairly healthy. And then over the next couple of years, we're going to see it start to have branches die off and branches die off to the point that I would say that in the next five years, this tree probably will be dead. And because of that, I, that's why every single ash tree is going to end up dying and probably over the next 10 years in our area. And ash is a very important tree that we have in our yards and this is one of them we're going to be losing. So homeowners have to start thinking about some things and the next thing we're going to talk about is what we need to do about this or if we want to do anything at all about the situation. As a homeowner and a person who may have an ash tree in their yard, you have a decision to make and that is when this ash borer comes into my yard, am I going to try to protect this tree through the use of insecticides or am I going to let it go and have an opportunity to let it go and just, and just let it die? If I am going to let this tree die, then I have cleanup costs or I have to pay somebody to do that. And although we've got a few years to look at this, next three, four, five years to look over this, you may want to start making those decisions now and thinking about what you're going to do with that ash tree in your yard. If I'm gonna let it go and not worry about it, then I'm going to have to have it taken out and I'm gonna to have to have somebody paid to take it out. And if that's a situation, I need to look into who's available to do those things. Are they covered by insurance? What kind of a cost is gonna be involved into it? Those are issues you need to look at. If you make another decision, and that is I really wanna save this tree, I do not want to lose this tree, then you are looking into the use of insecticides that have to be applied on an every year basis to this tree to help protect that tree. And I've brought along one example of that here today. This is an insecticide that happens to contain the active ingredient, that's the chemical that does the, the damage, called imatocloprid. And what imatocloprid is, is a chemical that once we mix this product with water, we dump it on the soil, at, like it says on the label, it goes down into the roots, it's absorbed by the roots, and it flows up and down in the tree. Now remember earlier I said it's the live part of the tree that where these insects get to. So they're in that area where the flowing is going up and down of that tree, and in that spot then is where they're going to be doing the damage, and so the insecticide gets to them. They're not so much boring down deep into the tree, they're really on the outside portion of the tree. So if I make that decision in my life that I'm going to put an insecticide on this tree year after year after year, this is an example of a product that has imatocloprid in it. It is not the only product out there. There are other ones like this. Bayer has a product in a blue jug that looks that way also. Don't get confused with the fact that it says bug be gone. Ortho has all sorts of bug be gones. And just because that's on the label, we don't, that doesn't mean what I want you to know. What I want you to know is to look at that active ingredient on that label and base your decision off that active ingredient. And it also mentions right here on the label that it takes care of the emerald ash borer. So you got a decision to make in your life. Do you have an ash tree? And if you have an ash tree, are we starting to see this kind of damage on it? 
and that damage means we've got some problems. And you need to think about what you're going to do and how you're going to take care of this or you're going to do anything at all. You've got a decision to make and I'm trying to give you enough time to make that decision. But if you're thinking about protecting this tree, get the chemicals out now and start on those. If you're gonna let the tree go and stop doing that, then you better think about making that decision about what we're going to do uh, as far as a tree service or somebody to come in and take out our tree. It's not a good situation. There's lots of different invasive species that have come into our areas and there's a lot of them causing damage in a lot of respects. But I'll tell you right now, this is probably the most economical one that we're gonna take a look at. It's gonna cause the most trouble to most homeowners in our area and it's going to give them a, 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 a lot of headaches and cost a lot of money. So be prepared if you got an ash tree.